This is a Yaodong. It's a type of house that's built into the hillside, made from compacted earth and bricks, and very common in this area of China. And this Yaodong is where Xi Jinping first stayed when he came to live in this village. I'm just over 400 kilometers north of the Terracotta Warriors, in a village called Lianjiehe in Shanxi. Nearly 50 years ago, a city boy came here to live and work side by side with the local farmers. That boy is now president of China. Over the next five episodes, we will follow in his footsteps from Shanxi to Shanghai and everywhere in between in the search for the making of Xi Jinping. This is Xinhua Special, and I'm Helen Bentley. Beginning in 1962, his father, Xi Zhongsheng, a communist revolutionary, was the target of a series of accusations. A few years later, when Xi was 15, he left home to be re-educated in the countryside like tens of millions of his peers. No one then could have known that he would rise to become one of the most influential men of his era. This is a can. It's a type of bed that's made out of compacted soil and bricks, and it's heated down here at the bottom by a half. But it hardly screams comfort, does it? And added to that, at night, President Xi had unwanted bedfellows. Fleas. While the parasites kept Xi awake, under the light of this lamp, he turned to the pages of Mao's Little Red Book and the works of Shakespeare. In 1974, age 20, he joined the CPC and not long after, he was voted village party chief. And it was in this role that he set about implementing a series of social initiatives, including a sewing workshop where women would make clothes for their fellow villagers. And also there was a consignment store where they could buy groceries, but also sell their own products. And there was a mill that had equipment that was donated by Xi that could be used by everyone. Xi also built this, which is a methane tank and it helped to provide the villagers with gas for their cookers and their lighting. In fact, this was the very first one in the whole province. And while he was a more competent engineer than he was a farmer, this was no less a dirty job. In fact, he said when he was building this, he was digging and he hit a pocket of gas and it sent manure just gushing into his face. Before coming to Shanxi, soft-handed Xi had barely carried anything heavier than his books. But within a few short years, he was carrying up to 100 kilograms of wheat over one shoulder along rough mountain roads. She calls this village his second home. When he visited here in 2015 with his wife Pang, he said the day that he left the Tsinghua University, he knew that he would always leave a piece of his heart here. She has recalled how little meat there was in the local diet. The one thing he wished for more than anything was that the villagers could have more meat more often. But meat's no longer the luxury it once was. And not just for Liang Zhenhe. People in villages across China now have decent food, healthcare, education, and not to mention all the joys that the internet brings. The Shanxi years were a period of transformation for Xi. From urban, privileged teenage boy to grown-up farming man. From ordinary CPC member to an elected CPC village chief. These experiences helped to mold him into the statesman that he is today. The roots of Xi's philosophy are here. See you next time.